Hey guys, welcome back to the vlog and to yet another study with me. Uh, as usual, I'm gonna just take you through my day of what I did when I was preparing for my exam and hopefully kind of share a few bits and bobs, tips and tricks along the way. So this happened a few weeks ago and uh, I was getting a bit bored of just kind of revising in my room. Uh, so I decided to change it up a bit by heading down towards the clinical school library. It's only about a five minute skateboard ride from me. And this is a good general tip that I find helpful. Like changing up the atmosphere makes revision a lot more manageable, especially when like being in the same place can get quite tedious a lot of the time. The official study day started at about noon. Uh, I can't remember what I was doing in the morning. I was probably like watching some YouTube videos, maybe editing a video. But from noon onwards, I decided that I needed to learn how to examine someone's testicles and how to examine someone with panhypopituitarism, which is a sort of disease of the pituitary gland where you're not producing any of the hormones. So as I was reviewing these topics, I started off with active recall, obviously, like asking myself, what do I know about this topic? If I were asked this in an exam, what would I say? And I realized that actually I didn't know much about the testicular exam or about panhypopituitarism. So then I reviewed the notes on it. These weren't my own notes. I didn't waste time making my own notes on this because especially with clinical medicine and most other subjects there are so many useful resources online and from people in the year above so the notes that i was using was made by a medic from like 2010 that all of the clinical medics use so there's really no point in us making our own notes about these examinations in fact the only scenario in which i do make my own notes is a if there is no easily accessible summary of information but another thing i find useful to actually write down is a mnemonics because i absolutely love mnemonics and Anytime I need to like learn a list, I try and figure out a way of making a funny mnemonic out of it. And secondly, I write things down in order to categorize things. So let's say I'm looking at the causes of anemia and I just see like a long list or I see a textbook categorized in different kind of chapters or in different sort of subsections. I would kind of write down anemia in the middle of a page and like do a spider diagram so I can categorize the causes of anemia, that sort of thing. So going back to the testicular exam and the pituitary examination, uh, after kind of reviewing the topic, making a couple of notes to like form a mnemonic in my head, I wrote questions into my active recall spreadsheet that I knew I was gonna review after lunchtime, just to get a bit of active recall and space repetition in there. Throughout this day of studying, I was using an app called Forest to manage my time. Uh, Forest is an app that's kind of lets you plant trees on your phone and the trees take 25 minutes to grow. And if you use your phone or go away from the app at any point during that time, then the tree dies. So it's a good kind of regimented way to use the Pomodoro method, which is 25 minutes of work followed by five minutes of rest. To be honest, I don't really use the Pomodoro method a lot of the time, but I do find it sometimes helpful if I'm in a library on my own and I want something to make my revision a little bit more of a game, then I use something like Forest to, you know, make myself do the Pomodoro method. So I've got this kind of game that I'm playing with myself where I'm like, right, I'm gonna study for 25 minutes and then I've got my break. I'm gonna study for 25 minutes and I've got my break. It just makes it a bit more fun. In one of my Forest breaks, I went downstairs to the clinical school cafe to grab uh, a latte for about £2.50. I used to feel guilty about this and I still kind of do to an extent but I think especially in exam term when we're preparing for our exams I think it's totally worth it to spend that £2.50 just to increase my happiness and increase my enjoyment just a little bit I think that's a good use of money personally anyway let's get back to studying so from 124 to about 151 I went over dermatology dermatology uh, the study of the skin is quite a visual subject so instead of like going over my notes or whatever I found some quiz on like a dermatology website online and kind of just went through the quiz and as I found areas that I wasn't comfortable with I filled those holes and this is another general point uh, it's it's important to like change up your study techniques depending on what subject you're actually doing and I know this sounds obvious but I've been getting a lot of messages from Instagram from people being like how do I apply your active recall spreadsheet to like maths or physics or engineering and the answer is you probably don't because maths physics engineering a lot of these like the best way to revise for those from what I've heard is by doing practice sheets and problems and past papers and all that kind of stuff and there's no need to shoehorn your revision for a particular subject into a technique that someone else is using. Just a general comment, tailor your revision techniques to whatever subject specifically that you're revising for. As I was doing the quiz, I came across a few conditions that I wasn't quite comfortable with. The important thing here is that instead of just looking it up, like I might have been tempted to do in the past, I decided to practice what I preach. And before looking anything up, I would actively try and retrieve that knowledge from my brain. So for example, what is the management of acne? How do we treat acne? I know that I know this and I know I, ha I have come across it many times before, but I just wasn't quite sure. So before looking it up, I asked myself the question, I kind of pretended like I was in an exam and tried to answer it in my head. How would I answer that question if an examiner asked me, what's the treatment for acne? And I came up with something and then looked it up and then kind of refined the answer that I came up with. And I think that's a better strategy than just looking it up because again, we're engaging in active recall and we know that active recall is a way of life. I also made a few notes for dermatology and now like I, I get asked about this all the time these days, this whole thing about making notes. As I said earlier, I think notes are really helpful if there is no pre-existing summary of the content available, which I think is usually quite rare. 
Um, I think notes are useful if you're making mnemonics or if you're categorizing things in like nice colors so that you can visually get uh, an idea of what the syllabus is. So if I am coming across a new topic, I have absolutely no qualms about making a quick document on Notability, which is the app I use for my iPad, um, and kind of writing brief notes about it, maybe including a picture, maybe including a spider diagram. However, every time I do make notes, I do have in the back of my mind that, right, I know I shouldn't be falling into this trap of thinking that making notes is inherently productive. Because previously, back in the day when doing like GCSEs and A-levels, I kind of used to have this mindset of, oh, I'm being so productive because I'm making notes. But now, anytime I'm making notes, I have in the back of my mind, right, this is probably suboptimal. I should be actively using these notes in order to learn the stuff rather than doing the notes just for the sake of doing the notes. And again, to reiterate, this is very kind of person specific. Like if you think that you learn best by making notes and you're getting the results, more importantly, then by all means, please continue to make notes. Don't let me rain on your parade. If however, you are spending hours and hours making notes and you're not really getting the results that you want, then maybe consider that making notes is probably not the most optimum strategy for like efficiently revising for your exams. Pretty much just do whatever works for you. Um, and, it's, and what works for you kind of depends on how you feel about it and how you feel about the results that you're getting, in my opinion. Okay, getting back to the day again. So from 2.37, for about 15 minutes, I worked on the stoma examination. Now a stoma is like a bag that comes out of your colon and like is flush against your skin uh, for people who've had like surgery on their colon or who have had their colon removed. Anyway, uh, we have to learn how to examine one of these. So like, if you see one in real life, like what do you have to say about it? What do you have to feel about it? What, what are you looking for? So I worked on the stoma examination for about 15 minutes. I probably could have spent much longer on it, but at this point I felt that prioritizing breadth was more important than going deep on any specific topic. And this is a really important thing that we all learn in medicine at some point, that there's just so much that you could learn that at some point you have to decide, you know what, I don't care about this level of detail and onwards, I'm just gonna focus on getting the big picture. And I think with any other subject as well, it's really important to get the big picture first before worrying about the details. A mistake that I see a lot of people make, uh, especially with stuff like chemistry where there is quite a lot of detail or biology where again, you can go into quite a lot of detail is that you know they would focus on trying to get really good at one topic and then really good at another topic and then really good at the third topic. Whereas I think a better way may maybe of doing it, uh, what works for me anyway, is to become vaguely familiar with everything and then kind of start digging the detail down a bit more each time. So the stoma examination took us to about 2.51, and then I spent eight minutes uh, looking over how to examine someone's rectum. Admittedly, I've done this in real life quite a few times. Uh, I sometimes volunteer for it in the hospitals or in the GP practice when anyone asks, because I think it's, you know, it's, it's a good learning experience. Um, so most of it, I kind of already knew. I kind of ran through in my head what I would do if I were examining someone's rectum. At about 3 p.m., I decided to have lunch. Uh, I'd spent the last three hours from 12 till three working on the examinations that I was weakest on. And by this point, this was, I think, about four days before our exam, there was no topic that I was thinking that would be really, really bad if it came up. So I'd covered most of the holes to a reasonable amount of detail. So the next question in terms of what I was gonna do next was asking myself, okay, which topics am I not 100% confident in? So it's kind of like the threshold for what we revise kind of changes as, as we get closer and closer to the exam. Hopefully we become, we become more familiar with the content. Therefore, you know, instead of being like, okay, if this came up, I would fail. Uh, it becomes more of a, okay, if this came up, I probably only get 60% rather than 80%. Let me focus on that topic to try and get those extra 20%. So I grabbed lunch from Costa and spent the next two hours using Forest, using the Pomodoro method and going over the hip examination, the knee examination, the shoulder examination. And in my Forest five minute breaks, I was replying to YouTube comments and Instagram DMs. Uh, follow me on Instagram and subscribe to my YouTube channel, please. Uh, sometimes I'd spend longer than 25 minutes doing something, especially if I was like in the flow and I forgot to check Forest. That's kind of the thing about the Pomodoro method. It's useful as a crutch to help if you find that you're kind of losing productivity and losing concentration. But I think if you are in kind of in the zone, then there's no need to stick to it in a regimented fashion. It's completely okay to do 30 minutes, 35 minutes, as long as you're still kind of in the zone, still focused. So now we're at 5 p.m. and I attended a lecture for an hour given by students from the Oncology Society, which was a really good kind of revision of cancer stuff. Um, it wasn't really stuff that was gonna come up in my exam, but I attended the lecture anyway, because one of my friends was giving it and just, just to see what it's like. And just generally, it's quite useful to get revision of stuff, even if we know we're not gonna be examined on it, because this is the kind of stuff that's important in real life as doctors. I mean, just, just from experience supervising other students, I think that the student supervisors are better for preparing you for, for an exam. If you want to be pushed in a very small specific domain and have like really intellectual debates with your professor, then having a professor who's supervising is probably better. But if you want to do well in your exams, by far and away, you'll do much better if you have a student who's supervising you, I think. Pretty much whatever level of education you're at, but this kind of more applies to A-level slash university and beyond. If you can arrange to give a lecture, a revision lecture about a topic that you're doing yourself to your peers or to people who are younger than you, that just massively consolidates your own, your own understanding of the topic because in order to teach something, you really have to know it well. And having that 
almost deadline of being judged by your peers for delivering a hopefully decent teaching session. That's a really great way of forcing yourself to learn stuff. So when we run supervisions on weekends, I often arrange to supervise a topic that I know I'm unfamiliar with because it forces me to spend hours and hours preparing the lecture in advance. So yeah, just a little tip there. So around 6 p.m. we went home, uh, cooked some tuna, pasta, pesto with veg, and then for the rest of the evening, we had a fairly chill sort of group revision session in my room, bit of chatting, bit of doing a bit of work. Uh, and it was quite a relaxed ending to the day where we were all low-key doing a bit of revision, but doing it in a group so that we all enjoyed it a bit more and kind of had a nice time with it. For things like biology, I found that doing the exam questions, you had to kind of be able to answer the question. So you, even if you knew all the knowledge, there was a certain ways of answering the questions, certain buzzwords that the answer schemes were looking for. So I would actually say, even though it's tempting to just go through your textbook, do exam papers and l revise from those. I completely agree with that point as well. Um, it's all very well and good doing active recall and free active recall and writing out everything you know about a chapter. But when you've got your exam in two or three weeks, that, that, that is totally pointless because that's not going to get you any marks in the exam. What's going to get your marks in the exam is by effectively memorizing the mark schemes, so doing loads of practice papers, actually doing them first, and then looking at the mark schemes and seeing if you can learn learn mm. what sort of buzzwords, enzyme, substrate, complex, yeah. you know, complementary, all, all of this mm. and that, um, that you probably know, but that you, you just need to like memorize the mark scheme in order to put them yeah. into your answers. So there were some, some six markers where actually all you needed was six words, and even if you knew all the theory about enzymes and digestion it was just those six words or those six phrases that you needed to get the marks so you need to learn those mark schemes i think a good thing to think is that the markers the the examiners in gcc and a level are like really really dumb they're just going to follow the mark scheme to the letter because they've got like a zillion papers to mark and it's pretty unfeasible for edexcel or aqa or whoever to hire like you know university professors in biology to mark your biology papers so most likely it'll be marked by hopefully a biology teacher, maybe even a random person who hasn't studied biology. They'll be looking at the mark scheme. They'll be looking specifically for you to nail those points. Actually, as I said, you do kind of have to have to get the buzzwords. The buzzwords is, is what it's all about. So that brings us to the end of this vlog. It was a pretty productive day. Uh, spent about six hours in the clinical school library, bashing through the examinations that I had left to do before my exam and spend the rest of the time having a relaxed evening with friends. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. Have a lovely day. Good luck with your revision and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.